The Vote for Mignon, number nine, book two. I'm going to do a playthrough of this and then I'm going to circle back and talk about some of the more challenging spots that we hit. Set on the A string, staccato to start. Thinking about playing mostly in the lower half of the bow because I have a bunch of retakes. If you want to count them, feel free. Ready? And. the hardest thing probably the minor section so I'm going to start my little investigation at bar 35 where we see three two one two three four one hmm huh, bunch of B flats in there a little bit tricky but we already played that low fourth finger in witch's dance so maybe not such a big deal after all let's just get this right This can be difficult to get right because the third finger needs to ring, then you pull the second finger back a tone away from that and have to make that ring as well, and then you need to pull your first finger a tone away from that and get a really great F natural in tune. Hmm. Again, ready, play. Drop. Set. Again, ready, play. Okay, without all the tucka tucka stop stop. One, two, three. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. If you need more practice, just pause me, practice it, do the things. If you don't, tackle the next four notes, the semi quavers. We're playing two, three, four, one. Hmm. Let's go to busy, busy stop stops for each note because you might need a little extra time to set the E flat correctly and then cross over and get the F natural right. Who knows, maybe you're just a genius and you do it right the first time. Climb up, second finger on. Tone away, third finger. Fourth finger is the E flat right beside. Cross over and pull back the first finger to F natural. And again, set your second finger on the A string. Three a tone away, go. Four right beside, go. Low one on the E string, go. Now let's play it one note at a time. Bum, 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 bum. Just separate bows. Ready, play. 
Again, ready, set, play. Again, ready, set, play. Put the bowing in, it goes up, up, down, up. Ready, set, play. Again, up bow first, please. Okay, now we're going to add the next note on because it's another E flat, so fourth finger coming back to the A string. And so we're, we're kind of do this little hoverboard with our fourth finger. Okay, we take it off to lean back the F natural, but we don't rip it off like a band-aid. We just hover it above the A string for a millisecond. Have a look at my fourth finger really closely. So I'm just lifting it off and then slamming it back down again. Ready, play. Ready, play. Add a note on if you're ready to. If not, pause me and do it a few more times yourself. Ready, play. Ah, third finger sneaks up behind the E flat. That's nice and easy. Go again. Ready, play. And again, ready, up bow, play. Last little bit. The second finger and third finger trading places. I'll turn around so you have a different perspective. Let's play the whole chunk again. Ready, play. Again, ready, set, and. And once you've mastered that little bit, just ease your staccato out of it. Make it more legato and gentle. But you may want to spend a week or so just playing it very stopped, staccato, controlled, making sure every finger's on before you move the bow. Next little chunk that you'll do a hundred times is halfway through bar 37. Set your second finger on the D string. So this is like the reverse of Hunter's Chorus. You're lifting your up bow. You're almost using the bow to pluck your up bow stroke. In Hunter's Chorus, you play. So we're flipping the rhythm around. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Again, set your bow on the D string. Set your second finger on the D string. You're playing the note F natural with a low two. And then you're going to put down a B flat, a low one on the A string. Ready, lift. Try not to stand too close to a wall because you'll do what I just did and stab it. Ready, and. One more time, I'll turn so you can see my fingers drop. Ready, and. finish for that phrase and then you play it all again so the whole problem section of this piece is just two chunks that get repeated if you invest a little bit of really targeted effort into those two small chunks it will be so much easier for you let me play the whole minor section that is often a challenge for people from bar 35 to 42 here I go because you're so good at playing B flat, you can just waltz along. I have a secret for those bits. Every time you run into those repetitive semi-quavers, I count three potatoes. So I go, I'm singing one potato, two potato, three potato, one potato, two potato, three potato. And if you have a practice parent, it allows them lots of opportunities to be silly, like stacking potatoes up on top of each other 
or stacking Lego blocks up on top of each other or building a tower and knocking it over again. You do whatever you want. But one potato, two potato, three potato, pretty easy way to make sure you don't get lost and play 16 potatoes by accident. Let's take a look at, oh yeah, the gnarly spot that happens at bar 16. This is the other challenging part. So let's take this apart. It's run pony, run pony. That's the niggly bit. Run pony, run pony. I usually put the bowing in from the start because it makes the string crossings a little bit easier to integrate. So up, up, down, up, down, up, down. Or I say our bow's playing run pony, run pony, and our fingers are doing all the fancy gizmo stuff. Set your first finger on and play me up bow one, three. Okay, easy. Let's play one, three, two, four. The two is so easy because it tucks right in behind the three. Ready, go. Again, run pony, run pony. One more time, ready, run pony. Now freeze there because you're going to recycle that four. And this is so easy because it's just four, three, two, one. Okay, if you look at the fingers that play the notes, they are just four, three, two, one. What's the hard bit? Two's on a different string. So put your bow down for a second and practice four, three, two, one, and give your elbow a little rock through so that you really emphasize where the two's going to D string. It's not really going to do that when we play it, but it's a good way of learning four, three, all oh, somewhere else. One, yeah? So I play. Four, three, two, one. Sorry, black on black is not ideal, right? Again, four, three, two, one. One more time. Ready, play. Four, three, two, one. Now put the bow on and we're going to go four, three, two, one. And we'll just stop before we cross to the D and back to the A because otherwise it's too hard. Down bow first, go. Again. Ready, play. Yeah. I don't believe in going really slowly. I think that if you teach, like, we're in dangerous habits. So instead we do little bits quickly. If the challenge is too much getting over to the G string, just practice your a few times. Two notes. When you have that, add the second finger. When that feels easy, tell yourself now you're dropping back to the A string and you're dumping your first finger on because the fingers are easy. Four, three, two, one. Right? And now we have it without ever having had a bad habit of thinking slowly and moving slowly. We've only ever done it quickly. Set your bow. Four, three, two, one. Ready, go. Okay. Pause me if you need to rehearse that. Otherwise, let's play the eight semi-quavers together. Run, pony, run, pony. Ready? Up bow first, first finger on. Ready? Play. And that's your spot to practice a hundred times. Now, the next little gizmo, bar 20 into 21. easy or this can be hard. I haven't worked out the secret yet. I think if you have a strong fourth finger and you're happy to play, then it's fine. If your fourth finger is not really well developed yet, maybe check your book one review because things like May Song and Perpetual Motion and Allegretto rely on that quickness in your fourth finger and a lot of speed and confidence. If those pieces are okay, then shouldn't be too bad. If it's difficult, isolate it and work on you know, until your fourth finger wants to fall off. Here's the nasty bit. Here's your demo of your hundred times, but
I'll do it one more time for you. Maybe you want to highlight it in blue in your music. I don't know. I like using colors in students' music so they can easily see the chunks that can be challenging and that they're going to stop and work on before they attempt to play the whole piece. Ready? And... And one more time that spot. Ready? And... Okay, so we've done the first ugly little spot. Yada da 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 dum bum ba dum. Second ugly spot. Yum dum bum ba da da dum bum bum. Here comes the third ugly spot. Yada da 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 dum. Hmm, I don't know why this is so hard. We're only changing one note. But maybe it's because changing your first finger makes all the other fingers feel dif different, like differently placed. So here's what we need to do. Get ready, pull your first finger back. I think having to play the B flat in the second phrase makes the ringing third finger and the high two seem more difficult than they are. That's just my hypothesis. Set your first finger where it usually goes and play one, three, two, four, A, go. Again, with your run pony bowing. One more time, up bow fast. Now same phrase, except we're changing the B to a B flat. So just move the first finger back. Everything else stays the same. Sounds totally different. It's really great. It's a nice little example of how changing one note can give you the switch from major to minor. All we did was move one note and it was a totally different feeling and emotion. Ready again, set your first finger on the B natural. Get ready with your B flat. And again, ready, B natural. Get ready, B flat. Singing one potato, two potato, three potato, one potato, two potato, three potato. And there you have it. That's all the nasty stuff in this piece. I think everything else is straight. So, one more playthrough from beginning to end. I'll go a little faster than I did at the start. You might want to play along with me or just read along with your music or mark stuff in your music. Get your highlighters out. Here we go. Ready? And. the bowing at the end but 
The bowing before your pizzicato is the same as gossip gavotte. So, in gossip gavotte we played and then we pluck. Here it's the same, up, up. And it's just about bringing your hand up above the string so that you're ready to pizzicato. So please don't get rid of that bowing. It's so helpful. Good luck.